Authentication is probably one of the fundamentals of security, but it is not enough just to configure user groups and authentication servers. So let's look at the following scenario. You have your user group, you have that valuable asset that you want to control the access to it, and you have your security policy. Now, your FortiGate will actually match users and their passwords, but you can also tweak other authentication settings such as timeout, such as the maximum invalid attempts, and so on. So let's do it. All right, so the following is a more general approach to authentication settings. There are different types of authentication that you can use on your FortiGate. You can use authentication through security policies or you can use them over VPN. But let's look at the more general concepts that are important to have more control over your users. So uh, move to user authentication. Uh, I assume that you already have configured users and user groups. And let's move to authentication settings. Here you can set out the authentication timeout, which by default is five minutes. You can also set it out up to 24 hours. Here are the protocols that uh, actually challenge the uh, users. You can use HTTP, HTTPS. You can also uh, use uh, a redirect to HTTP protocol to a more secure HTTPS. And you can use certificates if your users have certificates on their machines. Now, to use more granular approach, you can use the command line. Here you will use the config user settings. And if you press the get command, you will see that you have more settings to control. Now, the authentication type and authentication certificate can also be changed using the graphical user interface. Let's look at four settings that are important. The first one is the authentication timeout type. So let's set the auth timeout type. And here you will see that you can play around with idle timeout, hard timeout, and new session timeout. The most important two are the idle timeout and the hard timeout. The idle timeout actually tells you that whenever the authentication timeout ends, sessions, new sessions will not be allowed. Current sessions will still flow and get to their destination. Now, if you're using a hard timeout, whenever your authentication timeout ends, every session, either new session or current sessions that happened before will actually be stopped. So use that carefully according to your security needs. Another setting that you can look for is the authentication source MAC address. An authenticated user is actually bind to its IP address. I believe that since uh, version 6.0, it also can bind to its MAC address. So it is a good measure, a good practice to also allow the source MAC address binding to the user itself. Now, another two settings that you should look for. The first one is the authentication lockout threshold. Let's just use that. Now, that actually uh, uh, limits the number of failed login attempts. By default, it is three, but you can change the maximum number of login attempts. Let's just use five. And the very first thing that you will do after that is to set the auth lockout duration to, let's say, 600 seconds. That is 
10 minutes. So the lockout duration is actually triggered after the lockout threshold. That is the number of failed login attempts. If the users fails to log in for three times or for five times, then it will be denied from accessing the network for the number of seconds that you have actually configured.